before you even you know you wake up in the morning and say this is a new day what is this day going to contribute to my future progress that's all I have. I'm going, I'm going to do something. And in that morning, I'm going to do this and do this and do this. I'm not talking about routine things. You know, there are things that are routine. We always do. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you wash your mouth. We always do that. And then you go to take breakfast. We always do. You don't need to write that down. And then we dress up. And then we go a particular distance from my house to that other place. You always do that. I'm talking about something special. Something very definite that you will know that I'm spending my time today on this, this, this. And then you make sure that that is done. And that's part of your work. Part of the responsibility, the things you have to carry out. And it is when you carry that out, you're contributing to that day. Something that will bring your development and your growth and your progress and your success in life. And look at that verse 23. Again, man goes forth unto his work. You have a work that you do. You say, I have no job. Why don't you have a job? Well, because they didn't give me a job. You can give yourself a job. Think through. Use your brain. Use your mind. If you don't have work from other people, be a self-employed person. Get something done. And if you use your brain and use your mind and then you see what other people do, you'll get something done. And then every morning, every day, you go to that work and to his labor until the evening. Oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In verse 24, in, in wisdom as thou made them all, the earth is full of thy riches. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, we're looking at verse 23. In all labor, there is profit. Every day, give the day something to do. And give yourself to do it with all your might, all your strength, all your wisdom, all the skill and the ability you have. In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the leaves tendereth only to penury. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. What do you need from verse 8? The necessity of getting something done. And the necessity of laboring today with God's guidance and God's grace and great faith. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable unto any of you. Paul the Apostle was saying, we didn't want to be parasites, leaning on other people, depending upon other people, begging other people before we leave. We have two feet, we can walk. And we have two hands, we can do something. I want a brain that can sing, a mind that is strong, we have muscles, we can carry things and build tents. And because we can get something done, we didn't want to be chargeable unto anybody as if we were invalids to depend upon other people, an able-bodied man, able-bodied woman. Depending upon other people like a parasite, he said, No, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but we wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable unto any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you, the suddenly walking not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work, and eat their own bread. Actually, every day should have something done. Every day should be filled up with a good, profitable, progressive activity. And let's see First Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16. There's something you need to mark there at the end of that verse. Verse 37. 
First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 37. I'm going to read the whole verse, but you want to mark the latter part of that verse. So he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord is and his brethren to minister before the ark continually as every day's work required. As every day's work required. There is something will be required every day. And you demand of yourself something every day as every day's work required. Ezra chapter 3 verse 4 is similar, just a little bit different. Let's look at it. Ezra chapter 4, chapter 3 verse 4. They kept also the feast of tabernacles as it is written and offered the daily bunch offerings by number. According to the custom, listen to this now, and the due as the duty of every day required. There's a duty for every day. Labor today, do something today. Do not allow today just to be wasted like that. Get something done. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you, will prosper you. And then there are things spiritual, there are things physical, there are things natural, there are things professional, there are things relating to your day-to-day -day activities and work. But let's look at the spiritual now in Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 6, we're looking at verse 2. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also... That ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted. And behold, now is the day of salvation. If you have, if you have some spiritual things to get settled, don't, don't, don't push it tomorrow. You know, some things to settle with God. Don't push it till another time. This moment, this day, this time, so that your relationship with the Lord is in touch. And if you are not born again yet, but now you know the way of salvation, this is the day. Don't push it until tomorrow. I don't do like Felix. I don't have time today. Why don't you come another time? A more convenient time. But today is that day. We should never push anything till the following day that ought to be done today. That's what the Lord is telling us. In John chapter 9 verses 4 and 5. John chapter 9 verses 4 and 5. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is, while it is day. You don't have tomorrow. You cannot bank on tomorrow. You don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. You don't know the challenges that will come tomorrow. Just today, feel this day full of the challenges of the solution to the problems of today. It says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is today. While it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. I pray God will give us wisdom that will not be worried and anxious so much about the future that then today will become almost uh, redundant and useless to ourselves. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, let today be a gateway to a glorious future. Let today be a gateway to a glorious future. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 34 again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. That's what we've been dealing with. Now we're dealing with this latter part. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day is the duty thereof. Sufficient unto this day is the responsibility thereof. Sufficient unto this day is the problem, the trouble, the trauma, the challenges thereof. Therefore, you want to see what can I do today. By the way, as you look at many people, you'll find that one day was very significant for them. 
Think about Moses, for example. He had been going to the backside of the desert. And now this day, he saw the bush burning. And he said, I'm not going to overlook this. I've never seen this before. This is a new day. And this is a new sight. And this is a new revelation. Don't just pass by. There are people that miss opportunities. Opportunities of today. The challenges of today. You've never seen this. Therefore, wait. I'll turn around. And then it's when you waited like that, looking at the challenge of that day, God said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I, Lord, that changed everything. Do you remember David? And David had lost everything in Ziklag. They burnt the whole place with fire. And then they cried and cried. They didn't know what they would do. But then they saw an Egyptian. He, they, he was one of the invaders that had invaded Ziklag. He was sick. Don't just pass by. Do something today. That's him. The Lord is showing you today. Do something about it. And then David stopped there and then looked at that you know, young man and said, From where are you? I'm an Malachite, an Egyptian. And uh, what have you done? We invaded Siglag. Who are the people? They are my masters. They let me here three days ago because I was sick. Can you take us to the place? It will take you to the place. It will not kill me. Or if you not hand me over to them. And then they took care of that child. Take care of what you have today. You know many people, they just pass. They're too much in a hurry. They're too much in a hurry in life. That they see this day. And they do not know that that day will be the gateway. That will help them to be able to recover everything they have lost. Joseph woke up in the prison one day. And then he saw two prisoners. And as he saw those two prisoners, they were sad. Don't pass by when you look at something. Spend this day profitably and let what you do today contribute to the future. Why are you sad? Take note of people this day. What you see this day. And then they say, well, I've had it. have dreams and there's nobody to interpret. Oh, he said, God is the interpreter. What's your dream? The first one told him, he interpreted. What's your dream? The second one told him, he interpreted. What he did that day was a gateway into the progress he had in the future. When you interpret other people's dreams, your own dream will come to fulfillment. You know, what if he just passed by, had my own problems, had my own challenges? You said you have a dream, I have a dream too. And my own has not come to be fulfilled. Don't worry about that. Interpret their dreams for them today. What you do today is going to be the gateway to the future. A glorious future. And then he said, now you are going to be released in three days time. And when you are released, remember me when you get to the king. And then two years came and gone and went. And then eventually Pharaoh had a dream. And the man said, I remember my fault today. There's a man in the prison. What he did that day was a gateway to come into Pharaoh to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And then that was it that made him the prime minister. What you do today, that's what I'm telling you, can be the gateway to a glorious future. And let's look at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 14. You see what happened to the children of Israel that day as they sacrificed the lamb. And then they applied the blood upon the lintels of their houses. That was the gateway that led them to the land of Canaan. You, you have to start today. You have to do something today. And it is what you do today that will lead you to that glorious future. And we're looking at Exodus chapter 12. And we're looking at verse 14. In verse 14, here is what it says. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Well, you know the story. But it started that day. It started that day. And it was that day that led them on. Joshua chapter 3. In Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. What you do today spiritually, what you do today physically, what you do today mentally, what you do today will, will lead you to a glorious future. Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. 
And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You see that? You do this today. Sanctify yourself today. Separate yourself today. Deny yourself today. And then tomorrow, God will be able to know that you have done the foundation work. And then he'll be able to lead you to something glorious. Each day comes with problems and promises. Every day, there will be problems, there will be promises. Which one do you concentrate on? Each day comes with obstacles and opportunities. Which one do you concentrate on? Is it the problem or the opportunity? Each day comes with burdens and benefits. Each day comes with disappointments and daily duties. Each day comes with setbacks and stepping stones. Welcome each day as a new gift from God. It comes with lessons to learn and challenges to face in order to strengthen your moral and spiritual muscles. Welcome the day with a cheerful heart saying, this is the day. And you know, sometimes uh, as uh, David was, he was just going through the regular, regular thing. All of a sudden, a lion came and took a lamb out of the out of uh, the flock. This never happened before. Why is the day so bad like this that a lion came to the fold and took a lamb? David, I'm sure you are not thinking like that. No, I wasn't thinking like that. I thought, what a challenge. I thought it was an opportunity. I had something that I didn't know I had. Because if there is no problem, how would I know I could kill the lion? All of a sudden, something rose up within me. And I said, this is a new challenge for a new day. And the new challenge for the new day brought up within me a new strength for the challenge. And I killed the lion. That's a preparation to kill Goliath. A preparation is what you do today that will prepare you for the future. And then he was living his normal life. And now a bear came. And as the bear came, he didn't say, look at this again. What a bad day. Obstacle and opportunity. Setback and stepping stone. Also, problem and promises. Whenever something happens to you, whenever something comes, ask yourself, what can I get out of this? He rose up. And then he killed that bear again. Because it is what happens today that leads you to a glorious future. And now the father said, David, would you leave all those lambs and sheep and then go and visit your brothers and see how they do? Yes, sir, I will. Don't ever reject an opportunity to serve because you don't know that that day will be the day that will prepare you for that glorious future we're talking about. And then he got there. And Eliab, Eliab didn't understand the challenges of the day, the opportunities of the day, and the gateway of that day that will lead to the glorious future. What are you doing here? I know the pride of your heart. And he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Am I not here for a reason? And this day, is this day not here for a purpose? And then he heard Goliath bragging. I've never had something like this before. I've never seen a giant like this before. 